We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die here. We gotta get more food in here. We gotta get somebody. Hey, uh, hey, who are you? A movie guy. Hey, film banter. Yeah, yeah, what are you guys doing here? We're all gonna die. What are you doing here? We're all gonna die. <laughs> it's all over. It's all over for us. We're all gonna die. Oh, we're gonna die here. I'm gonna die here. Oh, we're gonna die here. I, I think we're gonna die here. What do you think? You think we're gonna die here? I think we're gonna die. Oh, we're gonna die here. We're all gonna die here. Help me, help. Yes, we are live. Oh, how exciting. Well, welcome, everybody. That's right, another night of just the same old horseshit. So, I'd like to just say hi to all our dear, dear friends out there. I will be subbing in tonight for the redhead fellow who is off somewhere gallivanting about the globe, having his syphilis and herpes checked out by a bona fide doctor. Sabbath. There you go. All right, my friends, it's so wonderful Welcome. to be here. It's certainly a thrill. You're such a lovely audience. We'd love to take you home with us. We'd love to take you home. So anyway, well, hello, my Mr. Co-host. Hello, my friend. Welcome to episode 67, everybody. That's right, episode 67, and I'm so enjoying it to be here tonight. I have to thank you very much for inviting me. Well, it's my pleasure, my friend, to have you here. We you appreciate know, you filling in. I know exactly. You know, the other the other week you know, I was here and uh, my agent had called me and they said you're going to have to lie face down in the snow and you have to you have to crap on your underwear or yes. some such nonsense. And I, I was so upset by that one. Well, you, but, earned, you uh, earned your paycheck. But anyway, you've invited me back and I'm very, very grateful. So thank you well, so you're much welcome. for that. Thank you for being available. Oh, it's my pleasure. Wonderful. Well, all right. We're uh, going to begin. I suppose we should begin the begin. I think we should. Because you know what? It's just the same old horseshit. Indeed. It is indeed. So very well. Uh, what's our first night tonight, Christopher Picard? Well, my friend, we are Aren't starting... Are you going to introduce me? Yes. Well, th this is my wonderful co-host with a hell of a head of hair here. This is um, Mr... Uh, Johnny T. Bonehead. Yes, that's true. Johnny T. Bonehead. Um, he's here. He's uh, in, the, in the bone instead of in the I'm flesh. I'm here. That's right. Uh, yes. be, people call me Bonehead all the time. I don't particularly like it, you know. Well, you know, some people don't have any class. What can I tell you? You can say that again. Yes. But uh, anyway, regardless, we're going to talk film. We're going to talk uh, actors. We're going to have a good time. So, uh, so we're going to banter about film, you say? We are going to banter. That's oh, what I we do here. So exciting. Yes. Do you want to begin or do you want to just I'd like... love to begin. All right, let's because begin. Because it's just the same old horse shit. Indeed. So what do we have first, Johnny? So we're going to start with uh, film. Chrissy, we're what's gonna... your name again? It's Chris. It's Chris. Are you going to be able to remember that? I think so, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so we're going to start with a film. It's called Goodbye, Christopher Robin. Oh, yes. Yes, oh, Goodbye, yes. Christopher Robin. This is a Robin. story of A.A. A. Milne. It is. The man who wrote Winnie the Pooh. Indeed. And associated uh, stories around that mm -hmm. very uh, little character, Christopher Robin, 
and the little Pooh Bear and uh, uh, Tigger and the little Piggy guy. And Eeyore. Eeyore and Indeed. all those little uh, MFers. Yes. Uh, so in the Thousand Acre Woods. In the Thousand Acre, Acre Woods. Woods. Why are you looking behind the chair? I thought I saw the dog, honestly. <laughs> They're always around here somewhere. Oh, that's hilarious. But, uh, yeah, so the, the, the character Christopher Robin, who we all know is the human character in the Winnie the Pooh series, is based on his son in real life, uh, whose name was Christopher Robin. It, well, his name was uh, Billy, Billy something. Well, Billy, that was his nickname, but his Billy birth name Storm was Christopher or, Robin. I forgot what his name was. Yeah, Christopher Robin. Well, Christopher Robin, but what did they call him, Billy T? Well, uh, Billy, yeah, Billy something, yeah, I don't remember yeah, what Billy it was. Billy something. But, uh, yeah, the little boy was uh, very good, I thought, as an actor. He was, I thought he was very good, indeed. He was very capable as a young man there. So I, I, mean, I thought this was a beautiful, beautiful-looking film. It was gorgeous. I, you know, that was the first thought I had when I, when I saw the first frame. They show this beautiful shot. The camera is panning down the sky into this wooded area, which is the woods behind their home. This very large abyss. Uh, Gorgeous which, shot. I, I, it was such a stunning looking Beautifully that, that photographed. Masterpiece theater feel, which I, I agree. simply adore. Yeah, I agree. And I, you know, I just thought that, uh, of course, we have Donnell Gleason yes. once again in this film. Who seems, seems to be in everything these he's days. He's in everything. He's a beautifully red-haired yeah. gentleman. Oh, much well, like, he, this much father. like myself. Well, yeah, you, you do have a touch of the red. You got a nice little flowing red hair Get here. your filthy hands off of me, you dog. I just washed my hands. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care. I know what you're touching me with your germs. You're Fine. always sick. Um, not anymore. The last thing I need is to be sick, too. Look at me. You're I'm just sick in the mess. head. You're sick in the head. I'm losing so much weight lately. I know. Well, you're on the starvation My diet. wife is so upset with me. Oh. I, she looks at me and she says, oh, no, not tonight, Josephine. You're so thin. I don't want those bones poking me. Well, uh, anyway, I'm she's, she's a woman of particular tastes. What can I, I tell you? I suppose so, yeah. you know, uh, but... Uh, I, Is I, she I, a plump woman? I, no, not at all. Very thin, just like myself. Oh, good, good So, therefore, I, I, I have to be careful, you know. I'm just a bony little man. Well, you do, my friend. You're very fragile. But let's get back to the film. Shall yeah, we? I think uh, we should stop digressing. Yeah, stop procrastinating, idea. you all. So, you know, I guess uh, the, the film, to just briefly discuss the story, is just him, uh, the father... Uh, talk, you know, discussing the, uh, not discussing, but he, he basically takes the world of these characters that were all based on little stuffed animals that he had with his son, and he brings them to life in these books. So all the characters are based on stuffed animals that he, him and his wife, played by Margot Robbie, uh, would do voices for and entertain the boy who was an only child, and they'd walk in the woods behind the house, they'd go for these long walks, yeah, yeah. beautiful photography like we said, and then eventually his son says to him, Daddy, why don't you, why don't you write a book for me? So why he don't does. You write a story for me, Daddy? Yeah, he does, and he didn't realize that it was going to become this sensation, and then it almost became a burden for the boy who was kind of being... You know, trouted all you know all over the uh, Europe and Eng you know obviously in England first, and then became world famous. And the boy was appearing in bookstores and toy stores, and he was becoming this figure that he didn't want to be. He was becoming a a public uh, face of the story because the public became obsessed yes. with the real Christopher Robin. Uh, but it's a beautiful film. I really enjoyed it. I was surprised how much I enjoyed it because I wasn't necessarily dying to see it. But I really, really liked it. I thought it was very well done, very well acted. Well, I too liked it very much. And yeah. I thought it was beautifully shot. As it, was. You say. it was. It was a cinematic, just a masterpiece in yeah. every respect. Yeah, I would agree. I love the, I love the essence of the, you know, the, the very cold and very uh, serene British, and and it's very much on display here, mm -hmm. just with simply the way they are to each other. Yes, I agree. So young Christopher Robin, he's asked Daddy to write him a story because he, he's always asking for a story every night when he goes to bed. That's true. So he has his Nanu or Nunu or whatever the bloody hell her name is. Who's oh, the, played by Kelly McDonald, played who by was Kelly wonderful. Kelly McDonald, who used to be in Boardwalk Empire. I love her. Yeah, and she was in her, you know. the two train spotting films as oh, well. Oh, yeah, she's so good. She's wonderful. But, you know, and she's the, most definitely the only person with emotion in the entire film. I would say so. Yes. I, I found Margot Robbie to be almost very cold in this movie. I don't know who well, did. Well, that is she her character. very, yeah, very stern, very... Very, very much her character, yeah. yes. Yeah, she and was. She just goes away for no reason at one particular time. They don't know why. She goes away for quite a while. She does, yeah. Yes, she just leaves. Yeah. 
And uh, there's poor, there's poor A. A. Milne, mm -hmm. uh, stuck off of Milne, uh, stuck alone with the boy. Yes. And uh, you know, so learning how to be a father. They kind of bond, and uh, those are the precious moments of the film. I thought. I, I would agree; those are beautiful. I moments. loved it. Yeah. It was very funny. It was joyous, yeah. and uh, I, I really liked this film so very much. Yeah, it was heartwarming. Uh, it, it was, and uh, let me look at you just for a moment, sir. I, you know, you, you, you seem as though your beard is thicker today or something. I don't know what it is. It's a good beard. But uh, I know. actually trimmed it last week. Oh, very well, yes. very well. But anyway, uh, yes, I, I'm sorry. I don't know why I mentioned your beard. Because but, you miss having real facial hair. I, you know, I suppose that's it. This, yeah. You know, you had to tape on my mustache tonight. I know. Well, you asked me to. It makes me very upset that I, I don't have a real mustache like yourself. I suppose I'm just jealous. Yeah, well, I, yeah, that happened. I'll be honest with you. I have been the subject of uh, male beard envy for years. I used to get, and this is not even a joke, I used to get stopped in the street by men complimenting my beard. It's so well trimmed. It comes in so full. It's the best beard I've ever seen to the point that I used to visit a friend of mine at his job, my friend Steve, and his co-worker would say, hey, the beard is here. I'm not even kidding. So I'm follically blessed. Oh, well, that's very good. Probably yeah. those gentlemen just wanted to you know, pork you from behind. You know, they, they might have, have wanted to. Like that yeah. also. They, wanted, they might have wanted to give me some kind of an organic gel. Well, they I'm probably sure. felt your well coiffed face was, yeah. was a nice resting place for the genitals. Yeah, sadly. God probably. only knows what they were thinking. Possibly. Yeah, I don't want to go down that Listen, route. Listen, we don't want to go down that uh, dirt let's, road, let's do not. we? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're such Get a card. It, dirt road. I got it. I got it right away. <laughs> oh, you're a card. Oh, right? you're incorrect. All right, so we like this film very much. Uh, it's we a did. beautiful made yes. film. Yes. It's lovely to look at, and uh, I, I love the acting. It was subtle. It was dry humor mm -hmm. throughout. A.A. Uh, a. Milne becomes a big superstar in his own right. And then, of course, as the story turns, he regrets having put yes. his child in the spotlight. Yeah. Well, let's not give away too much of the story. Well, I mean, this is history, by the way. It is, it's but simply... to me, all of it was new. I didn't know anything about this guy. I didn't know anything about yeah. him either. So well, then the saying it's history is pointless. Anyway, this is a beautiful, beautiful it film. It is. And I do hope that all of you out there, uh, sure, I'm just a bonehead, but I do want you to go out and try and see this. I would movie. recommend it. Yeah, it's I a good film. It was lovely. I really do. Yeah, I and agree. it's not. It's just the same old boy. It's not. It's just the same old horseshit. No, it's not just the same old horseshit because it's really quite mm -hmm. eloquent. And it's a film you can take the entire family to. I wouldn't suggest that, however, sir. Why? Because I think it's going to be rather boring for a little chap. Or little lass. Well, it might be, be boring, but film. it wouldn't be objectionable to children. Well, so... And the kids... Would, not yeah, the kids, test patterns, The however. kids love Winnie the Pooh. They might want to know. I would say an older child, maybe eight, nine. I wouldn't say take a four-year-old to see this, no. All no, right. Well, I suppose you could take it to the max, I suppose. Yeah, you could. I don't even think he would enjoy it. Maybe not. I don't think so. It's just not motion enough for, for young people to watch. I know. But regardless, for older people, in fact, some of you even watching the show, eat this tonight of us, Re uh, reviewing these films, mm -hmm. uh, you might enjoy it out there. No, yeah, you, you never know. It. It's a lovely, lovely, it's a yes. lovely, 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 lovely film. I agree. Shall we move on then? Uh, please do. Okay, well, next, uh, I believe you're going to review a film that I did not see on Netflix called The Polka King, starring uh, Jack Black and Jenny Slate. It's a polka, 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 polka kind of light. A polka, 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 polka. You know, this is this film is a, it's, it's a very low budget little Netflix D and flick. Yeah, I'm not interested in seeing uh, this. You one. know, it's, uh, that's because you're not interested in poker. Not really. And that's true. And How that's many people are? To see it. But this is truly a character study. Yes. Immersed within their own poker reference uh, system by Mr. Jack Black, Jenny Slate as his wife. And it's basically a love story. Mm -hmm. I would uh, I would possibly recommend it to you and the acute film buff. To okay. watch this film. Right. However, I'll take that. It's not a great movie by any means. To the general public and to you people with flesh on your bones, I'm going to have to say, forget about this one. Okay. You know, it's a nice little film, and uh, the people are all wonderful in it. The acting is quite good, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's just not very entertaining. And I must confess, yes. I too. Am not a big poker fan, you know. Ah, oh, I suspect. I, you know, I can do the hokey pokey. Uh, but uh, to do the the poker is something I don't really give a damn about. Okay, fair enough. 
So, you know, but the Jack Black immerses himself within this role. One As he does, I would argue, in every film. The yeah. man is the Jim Belushi of our time. He's good. That's right, you know. He's definitely good. Yeah, there was a little dumb chump, mm -hmm. because he is. He's truly the Jim Belushi of our time. He's a bit of a crazed animal beast, mm -hmm. and he really does... Wait, you mean John Belushi? No, I mean Jim Belushi. Jim? You mean literally Jim Belushi? No, 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 you... Damn it. Just the same old horseshit. You're right, sir. I it's thought so. John Belushi. John Belushi is what you were referencing, yes. May he rest in peace. Jim Belushi is still with us, thank goodness. Here's a fun fact. You know where John Belushi is resting in peace? He is. Where? Oh, where? Where he's buried? Yes. I would say somewhere in Chicago. No, negative. Because that's where he's from, right? He's buried out in Martha's Vineyard. Oh, that's okay. I think I heard that. He always used to go there. He with loves Charlie going there. Simon and, yes. and some of his other pals that they do cocaine's off the rock. Oh, well, that doesn't surprise me. But you know, so uh, he was buried there, and he's, his grave is there to this very oh, day. Good to know. I know. You're so full of information. You know, I just like to have fun facts that just aren't. Just the same, same old, old shit. Yeah. Fun facts are good. Yes, we've got to give the people something else. I agree. They've got to have more. Yes. Listen, I may be skin and bones, uh -huh. and I may be just a bonehead at heart, mm -hmm. but listen, I really do wish to tell the people something new. Okay. So go ahead. What's next on the agenda? Well, we're going to move on uh, to, uh, I would say, the big Wait, film of the did week. did I make it clear how I liked or did not like the film? You did. You did. What did I say? You pretty much said, to summarize, that... For a film buff, you would recommend seeing it, especially because of Jack Black's performance. But to the average or not necessarily film buff uh, viewer, you wouldn't tell them to go out and rush out to see it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so you were listening to me after all. I always listen to you. Oh, that's so nice. That's the yes. Same old bullshit. Thank yes. you so much. You're for welcome. That, son. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, can we move on? How does it feel to have flesh on your bones? It feels wonderful. Is it nice? I wouldn't want to be anywhere less. You wouldn't? No, I would not uh, want to be that flesh. Well, let me look at you one more time. Please do. Well, that beard is so fuzzy. Should we do a, uh, a staring contest? Oh, I, would probably I, I think I'm going to beat you on that one, sir. Yeah? Well, right. yes, because I'll, I'm dead inside. I know you are. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, All why don't right. we move on? Okay, what's You know, next? you're very... you got to sit up, buddy. Your posture is awful. Well, it is Isn't awful. that more comfortable for you? Uh, Isn't that more comfortable? Listen, I'm hurting like a son of a bitch, so please, just leave me alone. Okay. Anyway, hey, I care about my co-host here. <laughs> I can tell you do. That's why I'm in the state I'm in. I know. All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to be covering now the big film of the week, The Commuter with Liam Neeson. Also, I always love Liam. Me too. Uh, always, always excellent. Um, and it also features Vera Farmiga as well I as... I like Vera too. Me too. And I like Patrick Wilson who's in this film. True. And a nice uh, smaller role for Sam Neill who's always nice to see. I always like to see I love Sam. Sam. You Fun. know, I wish Sam would go back and do some more Jurassic Park films. I know, I wish he would. That would be kind of I cool. always loved him in the first one. Yeah, and then he did part three, which I still liked. Well, I suppose so, yeah. I actually liked part three better than part two, to be honest. Yeah, part two was... Uh, it wasn't that great. Directed it. It, it, I know, it wasn't that great. That's the one where the, the, the T-Rex is running through San, San Diego. Francisco. San Diego. San Diego, San yeah. Francisco, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't care for it at Neither. all. Neither. Um, so, real quick, actually... Um, a fun fact that just occurred to me about um, Liam Neeson and uh, Sam Neill. They were both in consideration at different times for playing the role of James Bond. Oh, uh, really? Sam Neill was up for the role back in the late 80s and eventually was passed over for um, Timothy Dalton when he took over for The Living Daylights and then License to Kill. And then, uh, I guess later on, when they were searching for Pierce Brosnan, they were initially thinking about Liam Neeson as well. So there's a fun fact for you. Oh, God. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to fall asleep here. Hey, that was a good fun fact. No, that was a fun fact. I hear you're a James Bond fan. It's your comatose. It was a lovely fact. Anyway, so The Commuter, if you haven't seen the trailer, it's uh, a pretty standard action film with, uh, like we said, Mr. Liam Neeson, who in this film plays a uh, insurance salesman who commutes every day to Manhattan from... I think Tarrytown. Yes, but wait. You must point out that he was, in fact, an ex- Well, I was going to point that out. Again, you're jumping in when I'm talking. He, yes, he was an ex-cop, and he gave up the profession in favor of something a lot safer for his family, his son and his wife. So he decided to Did become an insurance salesman. Did you recognize who played his wife, by the way? That was Elizabeth McGovern. I thought she looked marvelous. She looked good. Yeah, she looked good. I haven't seen her in a while. 
you know, when they sent in the credits that there she was, yes. I was looking for her. I said, where yeah. the hell is she? Uh -huh. And then I noticed, oh my God, it's his wife. Yeah, it was. And she was so lovely and thin. Mm -hmm. I felt a very strange kinship for her. Very good. Well, she and you? I are both very bony. Uh, I agree, you? yes. But anyway, so it's... Um, he goes every day. The whole opening montage, you see the first like three or four minutes during the credits, is showing his commute over a pe long period of time, winter, spring, summer, fall, showing the drudgery of the New York commute. And then we settle into the main you know, storyline, the day of the movie, where we find out right away uh, he's laid off, and it sets the tone for somebody who might be desperate for money because... His, you know, finances are very tight. He's got a kid going to college. He's got a mortgage. It's and that. May I interrupt you for just a moment? Well, I wouldn't expect anything less. Did you find that this plot was so very preposterous? Well, of course, a lot of these action movie plots are preposterous. That's not true. They're very blunt. No, and to the there point. are some that are very preposterous. No, this film was very contrived. I almost agree. Seemed absurd at times. Well, for me, here's the thing that I thought while I was watching the this film. The bad guys are calling on other people's phones. How did they get their numbers? Well, they had the surveillance state at their disposal. You oh, know, stop they it, do. Mommy. They probably no, do. I disagree. But here's my point. Um, the story, he, he gets, you know, basically asked a hypothetical question. He meets Vera for Omega on the train. She says she studies human behavior. She proposes to him for, you know, for $100,000. If you had to do one thing on a train for somebody, but you didn't know the outcome, would you do it knowing you'd get this hundred grand? He goes, you know, okay, fine. So he ends up getting involved in this thing. He didn't, doesn't realize that he has to basically find somebody with a bag whose name is Prim or whatever like that. He has to put a transponder in their bag. And then the storyline has all these revelations about who this person might be and different people that might be after this person. He decides that he's not going to do it and all these repercussions. His family gets threatened. And then, yeah, then it gets really preposterous towards the end. And it has to have that big climactic scene. Uh, I found the film to be fairly predictable in some ways, um, unfortunately. But we go to see these movies... Um, as we've said on this show many times before, check your brain at the door, just watch the action. And that's what this film was. It's a guilty pleasure. We love seeing Liam Neeson in these action roles. Uh, I mean, I love seeing, Neeson, seeing Liam Neeson in anything. But these action roles have become a fun thing these past, I'd say, 10 years since he's gotten into the action game. And I enjoyed the film for what it was. I didn't love it, but I was fairly entertained. Uh, again, my brain was put at the door. Um, what did you think about this film? Other than being well, predictable. The is generally uh, sitting beside you uh, wherever you are. I uh -huh. noticed that. But uh, I, I suppose I liked it a little more than you. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, one thing about the Liam Neeson film is that mm -hmm. you pretty much know that Liam is going to be put in some yes. some situation where his violence is going <coughs> to be uh, the possible route for him to take, yes. as it always is, you know you're not going to get a Disney uh, PG film here. Yes. That Liam is, in fact, going to take charge at one particular point, and he's going to make it his his point of interest to, 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 to kill some bad guy. Yes. So, uh, of course, that's uh, more or less what happens here. But uh, I think I liked it a little bit more because I think that the plot was a little bit... Uh, <clears throat> it did uh, derail mm -hmm. from time to time. Oh, <laughs> get it? Derail, uh, yes. commuter, train. See, like rail, derail. Uh, yes, I got it, I got it. Did you get it? Yeah, let's spell it out for them further. All right. So, like, if a train is on the track uh -huh. and suddenly it derails, yes. you can kind of make that reference point to the plot also. I agree. So, the plot derails a little bit, but then it gets back on track. It does. When we sort of find out, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Don't give any spoilers. And then suddenly, I'm not going to. Oh, okay. I was nervous. Oh, just be quiet, would you please? I'm just trying to talk here. You had your time. I didn't interrupt you, and now you're interrupting uh, me all I the time. I think you just interrupted me a few uh, minutes ago. As if I'm not sickly looking at now. Listen, you, uh, I didn't say this before, but uh, I don't have a girlfriend anymore. She oh, left me. I'm sorry. I'm alone now. Look at me. I'm a bony, lonely mess. And you it's are. your fault. It's my fault. It's your fault. Why is it my fault? It's your fault you put me out in the cold. Uh, well, hey, man, right, you, you, you took the gig. Be quiet, you little shit. You're All right, shit. so uh, the, the plot then does justify itself at the very, very end. I found it suddenly, I believed it all. 
So there it was good. I yes. enjoy Vera Farbega as the mystery woman. She's great. I wish she would mystery her womanhood all over me. Uh -huh. But uh, I do love her very much. And I, I, She's like, exceptional. This, I like this film exceptional. In, in a very strange sort of three-star kind of way. Yeah, I give it three stars too. I agree. Yeah, That's but you good... sort of said, oh, I didn't really like no, it. No, I said, no, no. I said I, I didn't say that. I said I didn't love it, but I said I still liked it and I was very entertained by it. I didn't say I disliked the film. Never said that. Sorry, I've got gas now. Oh, is that what that was? your fault. How do you have gas if you don't have any organs? Uh, 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 something happened to my, my... You sound like you're possessed. My anus is, is somehow uh, taking over. Oh, God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh I'm very stinky here. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry. Well, anyway, well, I don't really smell anything just yet, so you might be okay. Uh, it's just as well. Your, your own stench is so powerful, uh -huh. it probably overpowers everything you in the room. You mean my, my delicious animal magnetism? <laughs> exactly, sir. Yes. <laughs> you make me laugh. Man. I do. <laughs> so, um, we both liked I Commuter. We, this film. we liked know, it enough to recommend brain, it, yeah. You know, I didn't even think you had to check your brain at the door. I thought it was kind of interesting. The one thing I about... I thought you needed your brain from time to time. And I like the way that, uh, you know, he has to find a person on the train yes. who is, in fact, a witness to a crime. He doesn't it, know why or how. And then people are mysteriously being killed. Yes. So, uh, you know, there was uh, there was kind of a thing where I, well, what's going to happen next? Is this murder on the uh, Liam Neeson Express? I was thinking the same thing. It's or a, is this some yeah. kind of another? Agatha Christie, maybe uh -huh. didn't die. One never knows. But I enjoyed it, I have No, to I did too. Yes, it was all right. You know, it's 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 very hard to not enjoy a Liam Neeson film. He's extremely believable in everything he does. He's relatable. He's almost the everyman. Uh, and he just has a great presence. And I just think he's a great actor. And I just think he's a good guy as well. I think he's a very you know, likable I have to person. Say this, that, that he always saddens me because I remember that his wife. I know. It's hard not to away, think of that. Vanessa Richardson. Uh, the lovely... No, uh, Natasha Sarah, Richardson. Natasha Richardson. Her mother is Vanessa Redgrave. Uh, that, uh, yes, that is correct. Yes. And her sister yes. is uh, the girl that used to be our dip top. Yes. Uh, jo um, jo jo Jolie, Jolie Fisher, right? Jolie, no, no. Jolie? Jo Jolie Redgrave or Jolie uh, so Richardson. Jolie Richardson, That's yes. It. Yes, her yes, sister, yes. I'm yes, sorry, yes. Me. But, you know, his poor wife crashed into a, a, a tree. While she skiing. Was skiing. Yeah. And died... And so I, I always think it was, I always think it's very it, sad. It always saddens me, poor Liam. And I, uh, he continues to do his acting. He gigs, does, and, and yeah, that's how he good. gets through it. That's his therapy. You know, you we know? just saw Liam uh, in uh, in last week, uh, the Mark Felt. Yes, film, a film he, that I liked quite a bit. I loved it very much. Yes, I loved good his film. acting. I thought he was he's really great. quite amazing. And uh, you know, he's had an illustrious career. He has. He's been around since the uh, early '80s. And slowly his star has risen, and his roles have become more and more prominent over the years. Um, he's very much an A1 box office attraction. He is. He's still one of these guys that can open up a film on the weekend. He has not uh, released a film yet that's, that I can remember that's kind of went direct-to-video. At the very least, some of them have gone to at least limited release. So he's still a very bankable guy. I think he's great. Yes, um, I, I, I've loved many of his films recently. Me too. Uh, he, he did that one, uh, something about the grave, uh, Tombstones. Walk oh, yeah, Walk the Along the Tombstones. That was that good. That was a great little I like that for a good detective little thriller. Um, and, and what was the movie he did with Ed Harris? Yes, for Rona All Night. That's one of four films that he's made with the filmmaker that he just worked with on The Commuter. Oh. They did Rona All Night, and they did uh, oh, very good. Unknown, and they did Nonstop together. Oh, how nice. Yeah, and that director, uh, he's a Spanish guy, I forget his name. Um, I know he also did um, The Others, and he's done a couple other things, too. You mean The Others with Nicole Kidman, The Ghost Story? I believe so. I well, believe that was so. a good little film. Are you sure he did that? I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. That might have been one of his first films. Uh, I think it was a uh, big one. A big one, yeah. I like that film. It was the opposite of The Sixth Sense. Yeah, I agree. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was quite well done. But regardless, Liam has been great. I His remember name is seeing him in Excalibur. Excalibur. Uh, you know, he moved on to Rob Roy with Jessica Lange. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry, I meant to say, I apologize. Uh, correction, it's not It's not the other, it's um, Orphan is the one he did. I apologize. Orphan, 2009 is what he did. Oh, I loved that Orphan. That director. Yeah. Oh, wait, it and was Orphan. That's the one about the little girl. Yes, who yes. Who was really a woman. Yes. And, is that, uh, you've told me about that film, yes. Well, then there's another film by, that was produced by Guillermo del Toro, 
called The Orphanage. I love that Yes, movie. The Orphanage does produce by Yeah. Of course, you've never seen it. I have not seen it. No, anymore. there's so many films that you don't see. You didn't even see him Crimson Red or Red I'd Red. like to see Crimson, uh, Crimson Peak. I didn't get Crimson a chance. Crimson Peak, yeah. for God's sakes, man. Uh, yeah, the director's name Call is... Call yourself in review and you don't even get the, to see it. The director's name is... Uh, uh, Joam Colette Serra. He's from Spain. That's easy for you, um, man. You know, yes, yeah, so like you said, Excalibur, he was in, he was in Kroll, which I watched as a kid many times. But the first film that I really took note of him... Uh, was many years ago, 1991, I believe. It was Dark Man, which a film that I still love to this day. Directed a, by Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. And it's uh, a fun film. Yeah, a lot of fun. He didn't do the sequels. Arnold Vosloo took over for that role in the uh, next two well, films. Yes. Oh, correct, correct. And then his next big break, obviously, was 93 with Schindler's List. Yes, yes, yes. Another fun fact, that was 93, the same year that Sam Neill, uh, his co-star in The Commuter, also did Jurassic Park. Two films released by Spielberg that year. Oh, heavens. Yes. What was the other Spielberg film? I just said, Schindler's oh, List and Jurassic Schindler's Park. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, well, Stephen's a very busy man. Very now. busy, obviously. By the way, you were going to see The Post this week, but you didn't. Yes, I didn't because uh, time, time constraints allowed for only one choice, and uh, my life aligned better with the schedule for Commuter than it did for, uh, unfortunately, The Post. So... Uh, I had to go for the shorter film, given my schedule this past week. So yeah, well, anyway. I will be seeing the post hopefully by next week. Well, you're so short. I also said to myself, you know what? It's already been reviewed, so the urgency is not necessarily well, there. Well, that's very true. But I, I still want to see it. Believe I me. I did say, uh, rather the, the person I'm taking over for, he who saw I often he reviewed through it. his mind, because we're very similar, you see. Yes. Uh, but uh, you're both boneheads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're such a card. But yes, uh, real quick, another couple of movies of Liam Neeson that I love. Uh, a big, big. Well, did you like Schindler? Of course. How, who couldn't like Schindler's List? It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I did like the ending though, when he's being a big crybaby. If I only, well, if I only that was an important one scene. One more diamond uh, cufflink. I could have saved one more life. Oh, blah blah. You yeah, know, that was a great cry scene. Baby, cry Very baby. powerful scene. It was actually. Um, Liam one of my was wonderful. He is great, Knight. and what a well-deserved nomination for that one. Many um, true. One of my favorite films of his. Was I believe in twenty ten or twenty eleven the Gray? I love the Gray. I didn't like the Gray. It at was all. the first film, the first full film that he he did after his wife died. Because while he was, uh, while his wife when she died, he was still filming um, that movie, um, Chloe with um, with Julianne Moore and Chloe. Oh, Julianne Moore and uh, yes, and, and what's uh, her name? That little cute uh, Amanda girl. Seyfried. Amanda Seyfried. 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 Oh, and yeah. then he did The Grey, which I kind of felt like he was almost working through the grief of his wife's passing. Because in that film, he was a widow, a widower as well. And I love that film. I love the score. I think no, that's I a great film by much. Joe Carnahan. No. Love it. And then obviously no, 2008 no, right. was his big reintroduction as an action star in Taken, which obviously is redefine the action genre for the millennial age. Um, well, the original great film, film was just wonderful. It was the best yeah. out of all the take Yeah, the second and the third, they, they Not as got great. worse as they got silly. And, you uh, know, I didn't even see the third one yet. I didn't even bother. <laughs> I'd like to, though. Oh, you would, eh? Yeah, I would. But oh, the first one no, I've seen... No, afterthought, afterthought, afterthought. No, I mean, I want to see it, but I didn't run out to see it. Um, oh, afterthought, afterthought, hey, afterthought. Hey, here's an afterthought. Shut up. No, here's a forethought. Blow it out your ass. I will in a minute. But the first Taken is great. I've seen it like a hundred times. It's a great film. <laughs> what Le do you mean you will in a minute? In a minute. You're going to blow it out your ass in a minute? Well, i got to get some gas first. Oh, it's right, got to build up. Well. I appreciate your sentiment. Yeah, I, I mean, i got to be honest with you. It's not just gonna, well, I can't right, just do it on cue. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Anyway. Um, Although so often you do it and not even on cue. I know, that's true. You just let it rip. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, anyway, shall Would we move on? Would you do me a favor, though? What? Could you take my hand and put it up so I can show that it's a thumbs up for me? It's a yes. You want to do a yes? Well, for the commuter, yes. I hope you are because you have zero flexibility. Exactly. It's a yes. You know, I've got it's the best he can do. Well, I've got very bad arthritis. I know you do. It, it, it hurts me sometimes. I know. Why don't you sit back again? Relax. I can't sit back. Relax. It's hard for me to move my mouth when I sit back. All right. Now, any final thoughts on the career of Liam Neeson before we move on to another film? Uh, well, yes. Taken was very good. Yes. And uh, I like his walk by the tombstones. Yes. And, uh, I suppose that's about it. Okay. And I'm a big fan of the Christmas classic, Love Actually. He's got a nice part in that film. I uh, really enjoy that film every time it's on. He's just a great guy, and I hope he... He's a great guy, and he's a great guest on these talk shows. He is. He's, he's got a good sense of humor and, uh, as well. He's a very funny man. And he, he is. You know, uh, he, he loves to work. He loves his job, and he likes he to make action movies. He so, does. So there you go. 
Great. Well, we love Let to leave here. Let me ask you something. Uh, I, you I seem to have something caught in my tongue. Is my mouth moving properly? You're fine, my friend. You look good. Oh, how wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, you look good. I never know. Yeah, no, you look okay. All right, so... Let's move on. We're going to move on. What do we have next in the, in the corpus? Well, the yeah, I know you don't really have eyes, I'll tell you. Um, we're going to be doing Lucky. Lucky right now oh is uh, a film starring Harry Dean Stanton. No, no, let me be clear. Uh, yes. It stars the corpse of Harry Dean Stanton. The man is very emaciated oh in this film. Oh, my God. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Harry Dean Stanton was a prolific actor for many years also. He's also a musician, a singer. He's a very talented guy. It was like looking in the mirror. I agree with you. Seeing Harry Dean in the film. The opening of the film. Yeah, when Harry he's getting Dean up. Is sitting yeah, about in, in his bed. underpants. He's working out. Oh, my God. I, I almost lost my lunch. And, and listen, he, he, he you know, is he's got more meat on his bones than bone. I do, but not much. You know, we don't even really see him eat in this film. He just drinks coffee, smokes cigarettes, and drinks a lot of milk. That's pretty much his diet. Yeah, he does drink. Well, I just see him drink one glass of milk. No, he, well, no, but he's, we've seen him. He's very obsessed with buying milk. He buys it every day. He's got. He always has to have three quarts of it in his in the door of his fridge. It's kind of funny. But this is definitely um, a performance film all the way. Well, let me tell the story. You always tell the story. Fine. Family. Go and ahead. You're taking you're taking advantage of me because I'm a bony corpse. Yes, I am. You think that you should tell the story of everything well, you talk about? Well, I'm also trying to speed things along because you. I've heard that you're very uh, loquacious, to the, almost to the point of, of nauseousness. Loquacious is You know what loquacious means. What does it mean? Loquacious is very talkative. This is the Micro Machine Man, presenting the most midget miniature motorcade of Micro Machine. Each one has dramatic details, terrific trim, precision paint job, plus incredible Micro Machine pocket play sets. There's a police station, fire station, restaurant, service station, and more. Perfect pocket portables to take any place. And there are many miniature play sets to play with, and each one comes with its own special edition Micro Machine vehicle and fun, fantastic features that miraculously move. Raise the bolt lift at the airport marina, man the gun turret at the army base, clean your car at the car wash, raise the toll bridge. And these play sets fit together to form a Micro Machine world. Micro Machine pocket play sets, so tremendously tiny, so perfectly precise, so dazzlingly detailed, you'll want to pocket them all. Micro Machines are Micro Machine pocket play sets sold separately from the loop. The smaller they are, the better they are. That's you. Uh, well, very well. I'm not talking that much, though. All right. Well, why don't you do the review, then? I mean, well, uh, the premise. Do the, the, I'll do the premise. Give us the premise. There's not much premise to really talk about. That's why I said it was a character Really studies. a day in the life of Harry Dean. Yeah. Stanton. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he doesn't look very lucky to me. No. This is towards the very end of the man's life. In Last real film. life. He died shortly thereafter. He did. And uh, David Lynch, one of his best films, is in here as a tortoise-loving maniac. Yeah, he plays his good friend in the film. He plays film. his good friend. Um, it, it's got some nice little... Uh, it, this is not a major film by any means. I no. can't really recommend, except for the hardcore... Movie buffs. Uh, movie buff or Harry Dean Stanton lover. Mm -hmm. But this movie made me more sad than any. It's not a happy movie. Well, no. it's just seeing Harry Dean in such pathetic decay. And we know that he died, and you know. And look at me. Listen, I'm no, I'm no beauty queen. Well, you can relate. You know, that's I'm, probably exactly. the problem. I'm, I'm no, I'm nothing to look at. I, I'm no... I'm Understatement no, of the decade. Well, uh, 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 why don't you sit on my bony fist? I will. Yeah, I bet you'd like that, I too. might enjoy it. Uh, have a hard time wiping the smile off your face. I can tell you that right now. I'll have that boomerang like but this. Exactly. But... Uh, this movie is very, very difficult to watch. I, I, uh, I found it sad. I didn't find it difficult to watch. I just found it to be kind of a sad I movie. I didn't want to see it. I, I felt so bad. It's like watching poor Harry Dean just die in front of my eyes. And I, I, I felt horrible watching it. But I'm sa I, at the same point, it's a very short film. Hour 28 minutes, roughly? Roughly. With credits? <laughs> yes, and it, you know, it, it, it wasn't bad. And Harry Dean... You know, he sings a nice little Spanish tune. Yeah, he does. That was a cool to, scene. Yeah, trying to be very flirtatious with the young, uh, with the Spanish uh, yes. middle-aged woman who he's attracted to. <laughs> yes. And, and, and at the same time, it's it's a pleasant enough film. It is. But I didn't feel very lucky watching it. No. And I didn't feel that Harry Dean is very lucky because he died. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the film was released in theaters in uh, September. He died right around the release, uh, I believe. I'm not mistaken. I know. Yeah. And as I recall, you personally, Mr. Christopher Picard knows Picard. Yes. You were always saying, oh, well, they're waiting for Harry Dean to release his final film because he's probably going to be nominated for a big Academy Award. Could be. We'll see. I mean, no, honest... he's not going to be nominated. Well, I was thinking Trust the me. Well, I was thinking the same thing while I was watching this film, saying to myself, well... Given 
you know, the films that are out there right now and the movies that are getting the Oscar Way heat. too many, way too many. He's unfortunately going to be passed over, but it's a good performance. But I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if it's an Oscar-worthy performance. I think it's, it's a good performance. No, it's not a great performance I at all. I think it's just because of who he is as a legend, legendary actor, the prolific career that he's had, the respect he's, he's gained, and the fact that he's at the end of his life that I think was getting the Oscar buzz. If this was a performance by a man 15 years younger, you probably wouldn't have heard the word Oscar in, in, in terms by of no him. By no means, there's nothing Oscar worthy no. about No, uh, but it's just, you know... is one note. It's a nice performance. It's just him walking movie. around the whole movie and just, like, moping and drinking coffee. And, and but basically. what I... You know what I like the most about this movie is that there's a lot of character actors that kind of show up in this film that are almost... They're almost like he, they have little vignettes with him. His doctor. They have a big scene, him right. and Ed Begley Jr. That's a funny scene. It's good. Him and Ron Livingston, who's an actor that I like a lot, who I plays like a lawyer in this film. Exactly. They have a nice little scene in the diner. Then him, my one of my favorite, probably my favorite scene in the film, him and Tom Skerritt are talking in a diner. Tom Skerritt plays a, a, military, uh, a yeah. marine vet, and Lucky himself is a Navy vet. So there's these scenes with these very noteworthy actors, and obviously... David Lynch has a couple scenes. My favorite scene, yeah, if though, I may say. Yeah, he, he's great in this film, too. Who, who David? David Lynch. No, he's not great. Well, it's fun he to see him act. He sits there like a lump. Yeah, but I liked him in the film. Uh, well, all right. I guess I'm using the term great too loosely. I, I just like seeing him in the movie. Uh, you know? Too loose, let's write. All right, let's put it this. Let me rephrase. His presence was great for me. That, his let's, presence was there. Let's put it that. Let's put it that. notation yeah. to his good buddy, yeah. Harry Dean Stanton. They've been friends for years. In Long time. Life. But my favorite scene is when the social worker, uh, I believe she is, and she works at a church, and she comes to see Harry Dean, and she comes and they, and they and she just comes to visit him. Oh, you mean she smokes a blunt with him. And, right. And then suddenly... Yeah. Uh, no, that's the waitress from the diner. Uh, oh, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. And suddenly she just says, uh, you know, uh, he says, do you like game shows? And she says, do you like marijuana? <laughs> yeah, that was good. And then all of a sudden they're lighting up a joint. That was fun. It was quite funny. Yeah. I chuckled myself into a bony mess. Yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't love this film by any means. And I can't recommend it to almost anybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. It, I guess I would agree that it's not a film that I would say go run out to see. If you catch it on HBO late one night, check it out. Right now, you can watch it on YouTube. You can rent it on YouTube, which is uh, the way I watched it, which you can do that. Rent it on YouTube? You can rent, yeah, you can rent movies on YouTube. I've, I've done that many times. You can rent movies on YouTube. So you can't just watch it on YouTube? No, because this is a new movie. You have to rent it. Oh, for God's It's almost sake. like you're in a hotel room. You rent the movie, you do that on YouTube. Yeah. Oh. Well, there's, you can do that on all the platforms. Uh, probably they're watching porn. You're Why right. Would I bother but you can do that on all the rent platforms. A movie on, on, on YouTube. Yeah, not all the platforms, but you know, YouTube you can rent, things. Amazon you can rent, uh, unless you're on Amazon Prime, then it's obviously part of your account. But anyway, um, at the end of the day, uh, Lucky anyway. is a film. It's kind of like you know, it's a character study. It's also a study of of spirituality, immortality. It's a discussion on uh, what's the next all that shit. Um, so, yeah, so I agree that, you know, uh, don't run out to see it, but I still liked it marginally. Uh, the next film is uh, fresh on video called Professor Marston and the Wonder Women, about the man that uh, wrote and created the character of Wonder Woman, but who also is responsible for creating the lie detector. This takes Very place true, yes. in the beginning of the, uh, the 20th century. Why don't you, since I've already reviewed this film when it was in theaters, why don't you give us a little bit of not only the premise, but your... Oh, your thoughts. Well, uh, who is the man who plays uh, Mr. Mars? Mr. Luke Ed Evans, another actor who seems to be in almost every other film these he, days. He's very popular. He was in the, the latest Dracula incarnation. He was. He was in Beauty and the Beast, the live action. He, he played was, Gaston. He played Gaston. Yes. But uh, I really did love this movie. It's a great film. It's a great double feature, but it would probably put you to sleep if you watched it with Christopher Robin. Goodbye. Yes. But uh, th there was something rather wondrous about this film. I agree. And probably the performances of everybody. Yes. They really meshed as a trio. Yes. It's basically a triad. Yeah. Which means that uh, Professor Marsden falls in love with naturally his wife, played by the immaculately illustrious. <coughs> You're right. <coughs> I've got a cough or something. You know, it's not a cough that takes you off. Yes. It's the. 
coffin, they take you off it. Pretty good, sir. Yeah, I've heard that uh, enough. You've read my book. I Thank have. you so much. I have. Uh, but uh, I have to say, I love Rebecca Hall. She's you great. Know, everything she I did. like her a lot, too. I feel as though my mouth is not moving anymore. Your mouth is fine. Is it fine? Because I, I've got a toothache now. No, you're fine. And I, I feel as though I'm just kind of yanking on my chain right No, you're, you're moving fine. Don't be oh, so anyway. self-conscious. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Uh, but I love this movie. I, it was a beautiful film. I can't say I loved it. It's, it's a three... You enjoyed three it. Three and a quarter star film, if okay. you will. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I loved the relationship between these three people. I, I thought that it was... Uh, you know, I do believe that we are all capable of loving more than one person in our lives. Mm -hmm. I think that, that to say that we just devote ourselves to one person... You know, look at the Mormons, for God's sake. Yes. Uh, you know, they get as many wives as they damn well want. Uh -huh. And that fellow down in Waco, he had 12 wives. Koresh, David that, Koresh. That, uh, David Koresh guy. They're making a, a mini series about him. Down With there. Michael Shannon and uh, what's his name who's playing Koresh. Um, and, and the girl who... Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, there's a... I saw a girl on uh, some show and she, she's going to be playing one of his wives. I know okay. who it is. It's a girl who plays Supergirl. Oh, her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Melissa Benoit, ben ben Benoit, ben ben Swat, Sweet, whatever her name well, is. Well, I don't know, but... Uh, Melissa something with a B. Yeah, exactly. The Supergirl's going to be playing his first wife. Interesting. So that's rather interesting. Uh, but I did like this film very much. It's a cool. very beautiful film. And as I say, the, it has that masterpiece theater sort of glow a about bit. it. A little bit. But the most interesting thing for me was uh, to learn about Professor Marston and how he created Wonder mm -hmm. Woman. And that Wonder Woman's lasso then became the lie detector by when she uh, lassos you, yes. you must tell the truth. Yeah. And I thought that was fascinating. It was, it was a very interesting little tidbit. Yeah, I agree. He screwed up by not putting a patent, as he refers to it, not a patent. He says... A patent. But, uh, but little... Uh, and you must be patient in your patent. Uh -huh. I've always said in your patent and yes. your patent patent. But all right, Patricia... So, Rebecca, in that respect, she's most fascinating, and mm -hmm. she's uh, so so bitter, so sarcastic. She's often the comic gist, gist of uh -huh. this entire film. I thought she was just eloquent. She was great. And she never shuts up, much like yourself. So, you know, I thought that... Uh, I love the one scene when he says to her, Dear, I have to say something to this young woman. But could you please not say anything for the next three minutes? That sounds good to me. And she interrupted the. I like to institute that. I know, but it was—I thought it was a great little movie. It sort of fell apart at the end, unfortunately. It just kind of drifted into no man's land. It didn't—you know—the story is as a such. Uh, Mister Marsden ends up dying of cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, I love the fact that they show the real man and I always love that real yeah, women at the end who look nothing at all no. like the beautiful movie stars who play. Yeah, they—they they always get in this film. a much they better always, treatment. Yeah, they always get that wrong. The only thing that I think they were really close with, as I sit back and and. Uh, and gaze over the past bit of cinema that we too have enjoyed, and that is uh, the uh, the film with Sally Hawkins where she played Morty. She that was close. Looked a little bit like the real Morty. Although she was uh, a much well, younger representation well, than the actual. Well, one. not necessarily. Morty was a young woman at one particular time when she began painting her little murals and such. Well, yeah, but I felt that at the end of the film when Morty is very old, she didn't look as old as the pictures of Morty that I saw. But that's well, okay. very true. And you know something? They made Sally Hawkins look remarkably ugly in that film. I know. And she, they really did. But she she's still very looked, lovely. But yeah. she still looked better than the real Morty. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God, was that horrifying. But, you know, just as a general idiot of the cinema and, and just enjoying myself tumultuously over all these various roles that I get to watch all these wonderful people play, I tell you it's just a wondrous job we have to sit back and review films. If only we got bloody well fucking paid for it. We it will make one it day. all worthwhile. I can actually afford to put some meat on my bones, for God's sake. Don't hold your breath for that meat. Well, I'm, I can't hold my breath because my air has no lungs in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my lungs has no nothing. I don't even have lungs. Take a look, Bozo. I know, I see. I don't have lungs. Can you see me all right? I see you perfectly. All right, well, yeah, you can see I don't have any freaking lungs. Mm -hmm. All know. right, so there you go. Are but, you uh, done ranting? I suppose I am. I, I know, mean, I, I, like I enjoyed this film quite a bit. I, I reviewed it. I liked it. I recommended it. I remember I recommended it for you. You're going to see some other silly asshole film or, or whatever, some shithole I don't film. remember what I was going to see. 
But I didn't go I because of time constraints. And you said, go see this. It was a very commercial film. Maybe it was. And I remember talking you out of it and saying to myself, you know myself, I think you should go see this film instead because it's more interesting and more entertaining and our silly little ninth grade audience who doesn't even appreciate us will not even appreciate it that you review it, but you did anyway, and God bless you for it. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, so there we go. So all patent spending, I enjoyed this film very, very much. I'm glad to hear it. I truly did. Me too. So we're going to move on. Rebecca Hall. Uh, oh, we my do too. God. Yes. You know, Rebecca, as long as I have a bony face, there's always be a place for you to sit. Uh-huh. So there you go. But I, I'm sure she's. Uh, I'm sure she can't. Dying be. for that offer. Oh God. So let's move on. How'd you like that movie? <coughs> yeah, that was shit. That was shit. It was garbage. I don't want to see that again. No, that was bad news. That was bad news, buddy. Bad. What else you want to ask me? You got a light? You got a light? You got a light? I don't. You got a light? No, cigarettes are bad for you, sir. You got a mask. You got on. a light? No. You got a light? Uh, maybe. I'm going to review a film that uh, you can currently watch on Netflix uh, called Super Dark Times. And it's a new film. And uh, it's it's a pretty, pretty intense at times film. It's um, The title definitely... Um, sets the pay uh, the tone, uh, and so maybe. it takes place in I think 1994, in any town USA for the most part. No, you should say your town USA. Whatever your town it USA. In your town. It takes place USA. in a place anywhere that you can imagine. It's relatable to you if you live in this country, um, and it's just about um, this. Can you imagine? There's no heaven. It's or, easy if you're trying. I know John Lennon. Yes. Yes. Um, no so, hill below us. I'll Above wait. Above us, only sky. I'll, I'll shut up. I'll wait. I'll take a nap. Are you done? Yes. Okay. So, as I was trying to say, uh, the film focuses on uh, some teenagers, two boys, two friends that um, have a very close friendship. And then they go and they are hanging out with a couple other kids from the town. Uh, and one of them is. Is this a drama comedy? Oh, it's a very no, no, no. It's a very serious movie. All right. um, it's a drama. It's not a horror. Yeah, horror? Uh, not a horror, but it's a thriller. It's suspense at times. All um, right, cool. So the film is has a very nostalgic air to it, uh, well, at least for me, because I was in high school at exactly the same time that these kids were. So I really kind of felt that period of my life again while watching this, because like I said, it took place in the mid '90s, and so. Uh, there's How old def- were you when you got your period? Uh, I don't remember. I was very young. Oh, very good. Um, so there's definitely this nostalgia. I mean, and there's even uh, a subtle reminiscence of Stranger Things in some ways in this film. I knew you were going to say Yeah, that. it's just one of those things that, you know, everybody seems to be doing that this, these days. To put the kids in, in a time period and you throw things in there that are winks to the to different generation of kids. And anyway, long story short... Um, do we know these kids from anywhere? Uh, you're not going to know anybody necessarily by name. The one of the main actors, um, he's actually very good in this film. He was in Ozark, and he played one of the characters in um, Ozark, and he was uh, in this film. His name is Charlie. Hang on one second. Give me one second. I no apologize. One cares. I care. His name was Charlie Tahan. T a h a n. Very good. Who actually grew up. Not far from where I grew up. I grew up in Glen Rock, New Jersey, Bergen County. Well, that's uh, where Tom 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 Cruise grew up. Not in Glen Rock. Glen, no, no, not that. He, he was Glen Ridge. Glen Ridge. I think. Glen Ridge. By Montclair. Yes. So right. Yes. So anyway, some more trivia for you. So back to the story. Basically, these guys they're hanging out one day with this one kid, who is kind of one of these guys that not a lot of the kids like. He's kind of annoying. He's got a you know from the wrong side of town. One of those kind of guys. And long story short, um, they're all hanging out one day in the woods, and um, I get I, it's hard to tell the story without a spoiler. But let's they find just find a dead body. Let's just say a dead body is involved in the situation. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking again. No, I it's true. I got it right. And I'm not going to say how it happens or what what they do, but let's just say that things spiral and the tension mounts and guilt starts in some ways and there's stress and there's pressures on the friendships and things just escalate 
Uh, and it's a pretty harrowing film at time. It, film at times. Did you like? It? I really enjoyed this movie. I was really gripped by it. I, I got sucked in and watched the whole thing till like two or three in the morning, whatever time it was. Oh, I really enjoyed it. I, I was really sucked well, into I'll it. I have to watch it. Then. Yeah, I really recommend it. Uh, I will say that I wasn't a hundred percent thrilled with the way the story concludes. I felt that. Um, I just felt that I. Motivations for things were not necessarily 100% clear to me. Man, I man. felt that the ending was maybe a brushstroke too thin, but um, at the end of the day, I was very satisfied by the film. I liked the characters, I liked the portrayals. The actors all did a very fine job. Uh, very good. And it's a very effective film. It's a, I would even say it's a little bit of a gem in a way. Was it well lensed? It looked beautiful. It was a dark, darker at times. I think you'll like the tone of it. Oh, very there good. was an eerie quality to the film. There's um, just a lot, a lot to like in this movie, and I definitely recommended it. Yeah, very good. I, rec I, I definitely should, recommend I it to you. Yeah, I think it's now. worth seeing. Super Dark Times. Check it out on Netflix. It's cool. Well, it, you I, know, I think your recommendation has made all of us here most appreciative of your viewpoint. Thank you. I hope so. I think that I certainly would like to see this film. I hope you should. And I wouldn't do that unless I had just heard your review. Yeah, because it's a film nobody's really heard of. I had never, uh, never heard of it, but it's a little movie that's on Netflix now that well, I think people I should see. Because I, yeah. I am the knowing all one and uh, you are, I believe. Omni, on the omni, omnipotent uh -huh. eye, the omnipresent, omnipresent. We get the idea. On the omnipresent eye, or something like that. Yes, but I, I would like to see it now. Please Thank do you. check it out. Thank you for your review, sir. You're welcome. So we're going to segue to another film that's on Netflix right now. A much. Uh, lighter film, but still not a hundred percent light film called Mr. Roosevelt on Netflix. Uh, would you like to give the premise? I'd be happy to. Uh, Mr. Roosevelt is a film about a young woman who breaks up with her boyfriend and moves to LA yes. to become a comedian slash actress yes. slash stand up comic, etc. Yes. And slash she, YouTube star. Slash YouTube star. She is, in fact. And uh, her cat. Uh, with the name of Mr. Roosevelt, suddenly goes ill. Uh, she flies back to her hometown of Balls Falls, Montana. It's actually Austin, Texas. It's actually Austin, Texas. Yes. And I want to say this to interrupt real quick. Two things. One, the actress in the film who plays the main character is also the writer-director. Uh, her name is Noelle Wells. She's very good in this film. And um, I also want to say, just as a point of back to fun fact trivia, her cat in this film is called Mr. Roosevelt. In Lucky, David Lynch's tortoise, his pet tortoise that goes missing yes, during the film, his name was the Mr. Mr. Roosevelt. Roosevelt. That's I funny. Know, that was rather comic. Yeah. All right, continue. And most you. ironic. Yeah, what are the chances of that? I must say, what are the chances of that yeah. name being present? Very interesting. In character. two films that came out this year. I know. It's, it's so wonderful. Interesting. But I must say that uh, basically the film is about her coming back. Yes. She meets her boyfriend once again, who yes. she kind of just broke up with over the phone. Exactly. And she comes back. He's got a new girl in his life. Yes. Who is a rather pompous, prissy little yeah. yuppie Who's bitch. like Miss Perfect. She's a yuppie little bitch. A little bit. And she's kind of Miss Perfection yeah. at the same time. And I think she's. Mar I think the casting in this film is marvelous. They did a great job. I loved yeah, everyone I agree. in the film. I agree. Uh, right down to the hippie guy who deflowers her at one particular moment. Yeah, yeah, he was good too. Everybody the was good. The beauty of this film, the yes. beauty of this film is the sheer, not every character in this movie is a beautiful person. Yeah. Our main star, she's, she's, we see her, her, her. We see all sides to her character. Yes, yes. It is very much almost a, a good a good double feature with uh, Lady Bird. Yeah. <laughs> currently in, in theaters now about yes. a young woman discovering her life. Yes. And, and this woman, a, a comedian in her own right, who wrote, directed, and stars in this film, she's marvelous. I thought she was fantastic. She's the, the, the glue that holds this she movie together. She is the omnipresent glue. There's no question Very about talented it. young girl. Very talented. And she's not a beautiful girl. And but I she's love cute. that the most. And I love the scene yeah. when suddenly she's in her own... She's in her own misery. Yes. We never really... The thing that we question constantly through the film is her non-grieving of Mr. Roosevelt, who yeah. has now passed away. So... We never see her grieve, and 
animals as we all know. Well, yeah, we missed that point is that she goes back to Austin because the cat died and she had left the cat with the ex. And then she sort of defies that the cat means anything to her in ways. But there's a very much a severe realism to this film. No, yeah. I love the fact that the people in the film are not all beautiful people. Yeah, I agree. There's a wonderful scene at at a lake. I know, that's a standout scene. Disrobes and takes off their clothes and they're all topless yes. running about. And That was know, unexpected. It was a wonderful scene and it was so real. I felt that this film was one of the most honest films I've seen in a long time. I would time. agree. Yeah, that was that was, that was very uh, yeah, was a, a very good real human film. Uh, she, human films have a tendency to not only be funny, yes. but they're 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 as as Lady Bird or or three billboards and having Miss Mrs. Mrs. Zori. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we, we see we see life. Yes. Life is not always pretty. Life is not always kind. Life is ugly. I agree. Generally, 90% and of messy. the time, yeah. it is only the 10%, it's only the 2% of this planet who are the lucky few who are the beautiful ones. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and because of that reason, I, I love the fact that this film embraced yes. the oddity of life, the oddity yeah, of life, of which our main star is certainly an oddity unto her own self. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think she's wonderful. I, I think that the whole cast is great. Mm-hmm. I, I like this film because it stands out because of the truth, justice of, of just sheer... Uh, personalities on screen that forever <coughs> embed themselves <coughs> within my own self uh, because of their, 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 true, their true sense of endearment which they create through their, their persons as opposed to their, you know, how many films do we see? And everybody's beautiful and everybody's I know. gorgeous and these, these little kids and they're all having their little problems and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, bullshit, yeah. yeah. Bullshit, same, bullshit, sad, bullshit. same old, you know. What's your thing? This film was a real deal. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. And she is a, a, a discovery in this film. Uh, I mean, I know she's not uh, without experience. She's been around for a while. I was looking at her IMDb and she's done quite a bit of work, especially on TV. But for me, this was a discovery of discovering this beautiful talent, yeah, uh, Noelle Wells. Little, and she's very good. Film, she's she has a Zoe Deschanel esque quality to her. It's in the eyes. Yeah, she yeah. reminded me of her a little bit. Um, well, Zoe is far more beautiful. No question. Yes, but I think this girl has a there's a there's a quality there that's also very appealing, uh, and there is a quirkiness to her as well. Girl next door quality a little bit. Well, she's bloody mad, is what she. Well, is. She there also crazy. is that madness. She's yeah, crazy and she's yeah. nuts and she's yeah. real. Yeah, she is and a real I character. I like she, that. She was a nightmare, and yes. yet she was uh, she was a a joy at the same time. Like most women. And, and I don't mean to, I mean this in the most positive of ways. Women can be a nightmare, as men do. You know, we, we divide ourselves via the sexes so often, and it's so unfair because I find that we're all very much the same completely. Mm-hmm. We have different motivations within our lives, etc. But, you know, she really was a true human being in every respect. Yes. She was crazy. She was loving. She was sweet. She was an asshole. She was a bitch. She was a mm. constant reverberation of ping-ponging truths yeah. throughout. And because of that very essence, and, and, and you know, uh, we see emotion pour out in, in various stages that is un, unfathomable. Yeah. And it's all directed by the death of this cat. So therefore, the death of the cat is most pertinent to the very plot and the very story mm-hmm. itself. Yeah, I agree. Because we see we see people acting in in, in various alternative ways, and I, I think that's quite marvelous. I agree. Uh, so yeah, we both really enjoyed uh, Mr. Roosevelt. I recommend it. Really it really is a gem. In, yeah, check it out. In the, in the, in a the little gem on Netflix, Mr. No Roosevelt. No question about it, Mr. Yeah. Roosevelt. It's a gem. Please it check it out. Please do. It is. It is just a, a a real treasure. Yeah, I agree. I have to say, I would watch it again, not right away, but in in a year or two, I'd be happy to sit back and and, and experience this whole film all over again. Yeah, and no, I I would agree. I loved the boyfriend. He was good. He was very good, too. Yeah, everybody was very well cast. It's excellent. It was brilliantly put together. Great. Well, nicely shot, etc. I I agree. I I mean, again, we both love this film. Highly recommend it. Um, 
But I think we've reached that moment where we're going to say goodbye. It's been, our hour is up. And I think... Um, well, wait, don't we have other things to do? But we're at an hour. I think we should stop. I think we're good. I mean... Well, what was the next film? I don't really want to get into it because I think we should end the show. I'm tired. All right, goodbye, everyone. I think we should go. Honestly, let's end it in an hour. We don't want to be too okay, long. Okay, goodbye. Everybody, we'll see you next week for episode 68. Same time, same channel. Check us out on YouTube. Also on Facebook, email us, filmbanter at gmail.com. Wow, it was so yeah, nice yeah, to be able to get yeah, that out without having to, yeah, to fight for airtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you soon, guys. We love you. Thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, folks.